now here's Bob Cunningham and somebody else. Mrs. Frank Mullen. Well, hello, Mrs. Frank Mullen, and welcome to WT. Hello, Tommy Bartlett. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? Well, I'm, uh, yeah. And where are you from, Mrs. Mullen? I'm from Anchorage, Alaska. You came down to cool off, eh? Oh, I haven't cooled off much in Chicago. Say, have you always lived in Alaska? No, we were born and raised in Chicago, but we lived in Alaska for three and a half years now. You know, a lot of the folks write us and wonder just how the weather is every day in Chicago. And uh, for the benefit of uh, ex-Chicagoans listening from coast to coast, <laughs> it's uh, sleeting out this morning. Oh, isn't it? Freezing rain. That's what we have. Uh, how did you happen to settle up in Alaska? Well, after my husband was discharged from the Army, he thought there was nothing to do but buy an airplane and make our home in Alaska. So we flew to Alaska, and we've been flying lots ever since. Uh, those bush pilots are really very He's efficient. a bush pilot. He um, flies by the seat of his pants. He's forgotten the old instrument for it. <laughs> You'd have a lot to fly by, wouldn't you? <laughs> Here's another question I'd like to ask you, Mrs. Mullen. What else does your husband do by the, but fly by the seat of his you-know-what? Well, he's a homesteader, and he also is a movie distributor. Oh, he takes the product and distributes it around to the motion picture theaters, is that it? Well, not a theater. We uh, show movies in very small Alaska fishing towns, and uh, they're not in theaters at all. We show in a, in a tavern or a roadhouse or a schoolroom, any kind of a... You show in a tavern, you must be the original television artist. Oh, we are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, uh, uh, what kind of movies do the folks up in Alaska enjoy? That might be interesting. Well, the natives go for strictly cowboys. You can't show them a romantic picture at all. They're bored. But they like... Uh, oh, cowboys are right up their alley. Uh-huh. They're used to riding moose, so people riding horses are different <laughs> new to them. <laughs> Do you have any children, Mrs. Mullen? Yes, we have two daughters who have been born in the north. And uh, have you taken them south with you? Yes, they have come with me. Oh, what are their names? Peggy and Eileen. Is the husband with you right now? No, father is grub staking for us. He's what? Grub staking. Well, I've heard of top sirloin, but what's a grub <laughs> staking? Oh, uh, that's what you might call your salary in Alaska. It's a grub stake. Oh, what you, you make. You haven't known of a grub steak before? Not for years, I haven't. <laughs> Say, uh, how do the Eskimos act? Uh, I understand that the Eskimos don't kiss, do they? Oh, I think they rub noses. That's what we hear. I've never seen it. And I suppose, uh, I suppose when they send a movie up there, they have Dale Evans and Roy Rogers rubbing noses oh. instead of kissing. <laughs> oh, they don't kiss in the Westerns anyway, do they? Oh, no. They're well, strictly He-Man movies, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, how do, uh, how do the, uh, the Eskimos react when they see a love scene in the movies? Well, they just soon fall asleep, I think. Uh, what was your most amusing experience as an Alaskan homesteader is my next question. Well, <laughs> uh, one day we had a message to deliver to our friend five miles down the road from us, and uh, we have an airplane, but we don't have a Jeep. So the only way we had delivering it was in our airplane, of course. And my husband, being an ex-bomber pilot, uh, we tied this message to a big cabin spike and uh, put a white tail on the end of it so we wouldn't lose it in the woods in case our shot was a little over or under. So we went down to see our friend on uh, Longmere Lake. This was in the airplane. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was 7 o'clock in the morning, and Don was just getting up. In fact, we found him in his long johns outside washing his face. So he saw us and was very much abashed and ran in the house for his jacket before he would look at us any longer. But we made a good shot, and we dropped the uh, note right at his feet. Not through the tent or not in his lake, but right square on the target. <laughs> <laughs> well, have you had any trouble with bears up there? Oh, we have lots of bears. And uh, as I say, we have the two girls playing in the yard all the time, but we depend upon our husky puppy to keep the bears away. He's a pretty good bear dog. And as Jack Betty would say, our last question, do you ever hunt bear? Oh, very often, but they're not as good to eat as moose. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you missed, yes. But the only one you missed. <laughs> and now, here is, that was on Benny's program. We can use it. It's old now. Uh, <laughs> besides, uh, he's on that other network. <laughs> That's the way Niles Trammell laughed at NBC when he left. Now it's going to be dinner at the radio club, and then you're going to see oh. Red Shoes at the Selwyn Theater. Oh, wonderful. I haven't seen Red Shoes for years either. Muck luck, strictly. Muck luck? What is muck luck? Well, there are Alaskan winter footwear. 
And they're red shoes? No, they're not red. Well, the red shoes you're going to see I'd are ballet see slippers. I'd rather see red shoes. Thank you. Mm, uh, it's hard to imagine a cat doing a dog's job, but in Alaska, cats have been taking the place of dog sleds. Can you identify this particular type of cat? Oh, very easily. They're the Road Commission Caterpillars. That's right. It's made in Peoria, <laughs> Illinois. By Howard Newmiller's brother. We used to play piano at WBBM in Chicago. Not the brother, but Howard. Uh, do you... Did you, I almost said, did you ever use a mustache cup? Did you ever see a mustache cup? Yes, in museums, I believe. Mm -hmm. Well, frankly, though, Mrs. Mullen, they're as out as date as... <laughs> Try <They're again>. as <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> they're as out of date as, well, as tiptoeing around the house while the cake's in the oven because a sudden jar might make it fall. Now, we frankly don't think about that much more. Any... <laughs> of course, cake baking really used to be a pretty ticklish business. But not anymore, though. Today you have Crisco's double insurance that you can bake a perfect cake every time. A rich as butter cake that's light as a cloud. Moist, too, and fine textured as satin. Yes, Crisco and Crisco alone brings you double insurance of cake success. And here's how it works. First, there's a foolproof quick method cake recipe printed right on every Crisco label. Second, there's an amazing baking secret blended into Crisco that you won't find in any other type of shortening. Now that Crisco baking secret gives mouth-watering results when you use it with any of your cake recipes, ladies. And when it's teamed up with the Surefire recipe on the label, it gives you cakes an expert would envy. Better on every count than those you used to make. So ladies, you try a Crisco cake, won't you? Maybe a rich chocolate cake piled high with creamy white boiled icing. And you'll agree it's lighter, it's richer when it's made with... Crisco! That's right, Mrs. Muller. Your hospitality guests from Welcome Travelers. First of all, a North Star duotone blanket in sunny yellow and gray. <laughs> oh, wonderful. <laughs> and so you can make some of your own motion picture films uh, for your own oh, movie business. Oh, don't tell me. Here, I'm going to tell you. <laughs> she doesn't want me to tell her. Well, I'll tell you anyway. It's a Keystone 8mm oh, motion picture wonderful. camera. Oh, We won't miss much with it takes that. pictures in three speeds and has a coated lens. And here is the nicest present of all. A, a three-pound can of pure all vegetable... Uh, Crisco. That's right. Thank you, Mrs. Margaret Mullins from Anchorage, Alaska.